Well, thank you very much, and, uh, and, and uh, thank you very much for, for showing up early on a Monday morning. Uh, it's fantastic, and, uh, and what a beautiful day that you've, uh, you've uh, given us. And, um, and I see you've already got the three wonderful trishaws or rickshaws. And uh, we're just going to go through just a few practical things about the, uh, the trishaws. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you, how many of you have ever been on a cargo bike before? <laughs> this is, a, this is, a, this is a, a form of a cargo bike, right? This is a bike that can take cargo, or humans. No? All right, so we, now I know what, to, what I have to start with, right? And um, these, are, these are made uh, in Copenhagen, so they have been shipped over uh, across the ocean, and, uh, and now they're here. And they're uh, actually, they were, they were built, um, they were designed about 15 years ago, but then they went out of production, and it actually didn't start again until um, when we started with Cycling Without Age. And now we've, we've helped them modify the, uh, the rickshaw so that it looks the way it does today. And um, it's, a wonderful, it's a wonderful piece of equipment. And when, when we ask the people who manufacture it, um, what's the durability? You know, how many years can we ride this? They say, we actually don't know, because we've only been manufacturing for 31 years. And there are still some of the originals out there cycling. <laughs> So they are extremely sturdy, and, um, and that's, you know, they need that because uh, we're traveling with uh, precious cargo, okay? Um, so the main difference between a trishaw and a normal bike is that uh, it's got three wheels. And when you've got three wheels, normally when you're on a bike and you turn, you can kind of lean in, right? Um, and it's, it's something you do naturally, but you can't really do it to the same extent on a, on a cargo bike because it's got three wheels. So that's actually one of the, the main things is when you turn the bike, you've got to basically do something that is perhaps a little bit against nature to turn. You have to actually move one of the hands. So when you turn, you move the outer hand into the middle, and then you can actually still lean a little bit into the, into the, the side that you turn to. You go the other way, you do it like this. So basically, you put your hand on that sticker that says, hurry up slowly, turn softly. <laughs> That's kind of the motto here, right? So these are, these are the, actually two of the main things you've got to remember as a pilot is actually on that sticker. Go slowly, hurry up slowly, um, and turn softly. If you do that, then nothing can happen. Um, it's, um, it's, it's very stable on the road, but if you ride it empty, it can feel a little bit lighter. And actually, if you go really fast, empty, you can also flip it over. Um, so, um, so that's why it, it, it makes good sense when you, when you practice, you have at least one passenger inside. Because then it responds the way that it does when you're actually cycling with, uh, with maybe two passengers, two of the elders here, for instance. And in so, addition, it's also very good to have actually tried the role as a passenger, because there's a different context for the traffic and the things in front of you to when you're sitting behind. Exactly, yeah. So actually, right now, I'm just going to show you when I, I'm just going to go up here and turn. It can actually turn quite sharply. So you go up like this, you brake, and then you lean in like this. And you can actually lean in quite far. And now we get to a point where we can't get any further. And you think, oh my god, I've got two grown-up passengers here. How am I going to turn this around? Good thing is, it's actually very light at the back. And there's a handle here, so you can just do this even if you've got two grown-up passengers in the seat in front of you. That's very handy, isn't it? Yeah. If you get stuck in some uh, dead end somewhere. <laughs> and um, so that's, that's turning. And you, you, know, you, can, you can listen to all the, the theory, but you have to practice. You have to do it yourself. And the good thing is to actually do it outside uh, in a car park and, uh, and do just the number eight. Because if you do the number eight, then you have to take it in turns to turn left and right and left and right and just do it very, very slowly, have at least one passenger inside. And that's what we're going to do in a few minutes. Um, now, one of the other features of this one is that it has a hood, which is because uh, you know, I, I understand it was a blasting heat last week here. So uh, probably you, know, you wouldn't want to be sitting out in the sun too long. This is really good for uh, you know, protecting against the sun. But it's also very good for you know, when it's raining. And it's got this rain cover as well which is also warm on the inside. It's got uh, this fleece lining, and it's easy to uh, take off. 
and uh, it sort of fits neatly onto the, the, the bottom tray down here. And, uh, and this one, when you take on passengers, obviously you've got to make sure you remove this one. And down here as well. You can even take this one off. And, uh, and then you fold back the hood like this. And then it's pretty easy for a passenger to get on board like this. Okay? And the hood can actually come off as well. Because as you can see right now, there's a little bit of a barrier between the passenger and the, the pilot. So what you do is, uh, and maybe Dordie, if you can help, you, um, you take on, take the first one off here, the second one here. There are two little holders at the bottom as well. So you basically just move, have you got yours off? <laughs> you just move it down and fasten it like this. So now you have full access to conversation with your passengers. And you can sit here and uh, I like to sometimes, you know, you, you cycle along and then you stop and you can kind of lean forward and there's a, there's a good conversation flowing. And you're all looking the same way. And you're very close to uh, your passengers' ears as well. So uh, th it's a very good way of, uh, of spending time together on a rickshaw like that. So I, I often, most of the time, unless it's raining or if, if the sun is really strong, I usually put the hood down in this position. But it's, uh, the good thing is, it's always it's with you. So suddenly, if you need some uh, protection against sun or rain, then you can just put it back up again. It takes 10 seconds. Um, yeah. What else do we need to think? The battery, yeah. There's a, there's a small uh, electric engine on. And um, it actually sits inside the, the, the hub of the, of the back wheel. And this is the battery that sits here. The battery is, um, is a 250 watts. So it, and it's called a battery assist. You probably know about e-bikes. And uh, you don't need to pedal. But this is actually a different machine. You have to pedal. You can, uh, you can, you can actually get it to, uh, to give you just a little bit before you actually start pedaling, but only kind of walking distance. So what you do is you turn it on at the back here. The back light turns on. <clears throat> and then you turn on this little monitor. And so now it's on. And we're just going to try it. And I'm going to ram right into you <laughs> like this. Um, but you have to pedal. And uh, if you're going, for instance, uh, six or seven miles an hour down the, the, the road and, uh, and you stop pedaling, the engine is going to stop assisting you. Um, and actually, most of the time, you don't really need it. I mean, I'm sure that most of you uh, are doing this as well to get just a little bit of exercise as well. So, uh, you know, only use it if you really have to get over some of the bridges. Or I think this is fairly flat country, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> so you probably don't need it that much, but it's good to have. Um, the battery can also be uh, taken off and, and recharged. So you, you turn the, uh, the, the key around down to the, the last position, and then you can just slide it out like this. And it basically runs on two rails. And you put it back on again, like this. Put it in the lock position and turn it on. And then you always just got to remember to put it on up on the, uh, the monitor as well. And using the the engine assist. There's a small accelerator on the handle here, and it's a little bit like a motorbike. So you just turn it backwards towards yourself, and then you just get a little bit of help with that. But while we practice today, we're going to do it without the, uh, the engine, because we're just going to be out here going very slowly. Um, and then once you all feel comfortable, you can start experimenting with uh, the engine assist as well. Um, taking on passengers. The best way is, and if, uh, if like, uh, you have a, a walking frame, it's the best way is to actually come up from behind like this, put the walking frame here, get someone from the other side to assist, and step in sideways at the lower point down here. Get up, get someone as well to, uh, to just balance the bike by holding on the seat or holding on uh, the handle here, and, uh, and that makes a very comfortable entry onto the bike. Then there's a seat belt. And the seatbelt can be adjusted to uh, sort of any position, sometimes at least. There it is. 
and you just basically put it on like this. And it's important to put the to put the seatbelt on because if you do have to make an emergency brake, it's a it's a good idea to uh, to have your passengers strapped in. Um, there are two brakes. The uh, the brake on your right hand side is for the back wheel, and that's the one I usually use most of the time. And then once I I get to uh, almost to a final stop, I use the, the front brake, which basically brakes on both front wheels. So like this, and then brake it. And then this little um, metal split, you, you hold it in, and you press it down while you're holding in, and release. And now it's locked. And that's the position it needs to be in when you take on passengers, because then the bike doesn't suddenly start rolling. And then to go again, you just push it and release it and then uh, you can ride. There are gears on as well. How many of you ride bikes with gears or have experience? Excellent. These are external gears, so you know with external gears you have to pedal while changing gears. And so there are two levers here. There's one for your thumb, which um, brings you down in gear, and there's one for your other finger here, which uh, brings you up in gear. And uh, most of the time, we're riding in fairly low gear because we've got, uh, you know, we've got cargo on. So, uh, so that, that's, uh, that's a pretty good idea. And, uh, and also, always remember, before approaching a stop, to get it down in gear so you don't start in a high gear. That's a good idea. This is a lot of things to take in. And uh, the best thing is basically just to try it. Luckily, we've got three bikes. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to get out there and, and try it out. And we're going to try and go out with all three bikes. Uh, you take it in turns. Always bring one passenger on board. And then we're going to start to do the, uh, the number eight out on the, on the tarmac out there. That was briefly the instructions. Do you have anything to add? I think that's cool. Yeah? yeah. Actually, Thanks. you know, um, you, you can also adjust the seat. That's probably uh, an important point because, uh, you know, we have different uh, lengths of legs. Um, this is called a quick release. So basically, without a tool, you can put it up fairly high, or you can put it all the way down. So uh, always just make sure that uh, you have it at, at a comfortable position before you go riding. You can reach the pedals and, uh, and that it's in a, in a good uh, position for you. Quite often, you'll probably have it a bit lower than on your, your normal bike, uh, because then you've got more control over the sort of front box. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Shall we team up around the bikes and take them outside? Maybe just if, uh, if uh, anybody has any questions. Any questions? How long does the battery last? That's a very good question, actually. Uh, the battery, when it's new, like it is right now, it'll probably take you about um, 15, 20 miles. But it, it depends on uh, whether you use it all the time. That's if you, if you, if you use the accelerator all the time, and you're going to drain it, and you've got two passengers. Then you can probably do 15 to 18 miles. If you, um, if you only use it occasionally, you could probably ride up to 50 miles, um, but I wouldn't advise that. And uh, it's always a good idea to bring the, uh, the charger. At the, right now, the charger is down here. And so if you go somewhere, a restaurant, and have lunch or whatever, uh, put the battery uh, on charge. Then you know, when you leave, you've got a little bit more in as well. That's a good idea. You don't have to actually use the accelerator. Like right now, uh, it doesn't work because I haven't switched on this one, but the lights are still on. So you can easily ride around without uh, using the uh, electric assist and still have lights on. And it, it's on all the time. So, and I think it's a good idea because, uh, you know, no matter what uh, conditions, you know, it's a good idea to be visible when you're out there. Um, I don't know what the, uh, the rules are here, but in, in, in Denmark, you use the, the hand signs. Yep. And in Denmark, we, uh, we use uh, this for stop. I don't know if that goes here as well, but, um, but it's a good idea to actually make an agreement with your passengers that they might do it for you uh, and say, because actually tur turning the bike with one hand can be a bit tricky. So actually, if you do do it yourself, do it before you start the turn. Just you know, indicate I'm going to turn, put the hands back on, and then do the turn with both hands in, in this way. Okay.